Hello, I uh, I purchased this X-Touch One uh, about a week ago with a viewer of using it in Reason, and I knew that Reason had some compatibility issues with it, um, and that it used the Mackie control and would probably require some manual configuration. Um, but I was I was quite content with that, and uh, I knew I'd be able to pick it up. I'm a software developer by day anyway. Never touched LUA, never touched the reason remote maps um, but I knew I'd figure it out as I went along anyway so I think I've got it to a pretty good place for myself now now with it being only the single channel uh, model I knew I wouldn't be able to get like control reason completely from this device um, obviously with like the eight channel one I could use it the the other faders for EQs and the other rotary uh, and buttons for to basically control reason <laughs> directly from this and without touching a mouse. I knew that was never going to be the case, but what I did want to do was improve my workflow. And I think I've got it to a pretty good place at the moment. Now, I haven't relabeled it all yet. I haven't designed a new overlay for it yet, but I'll, I'll hopefully get to that point. But what I thought it would be useful is show you how I've mapped it, potentially share the map with anybody if they're interested. Um, yeah, and happy f to hear your thoughts on it. So I'm, I'll take you through what I've mapped so far. I've not necessarily mapped everything yet. Um, I haven't decided the best way for me to map certain things, but I'll talk you through what I have done. First of all, I'll start with the scrub wheel. Uh, so let me just bring Reason up. I'll start with the scrub. Uh, it has three functions. Now, if I bring up the sequencer, you'll be able to see. It has three functions. Um, the first one is to move the playhead. If I press the scrub button, that puts it in left loop uh, mode. If I press it again, so it's flashing, puts it in right loop mode, so I can move the loop markers. Uh, press it again, so the LED is off, and we're back to scrub mode. Now, the zoom functionality, I hadn't decided fully what to do yet, because I haven't, or I, I would have liked to have had that to zoom in on the tracks on reason, uh, like this, but, um, it's not not to be um, I haven't figured that out yet even if it's possible so what I did have is a secondary mode hopefully I may get zoom mode but again like I said not working a secondary mode when it's in flashing allows me to move up and down the sequencer window now that will change the MIDI keyboard functionality uh, if I'm on devices and obviously which track I'm going to record on <clears throat> but it doesn't change which track I'm actually controlling with the fader or the rotaries and so on. It's purely just within the sequencer window. Standard, uh, like every other mapping, I'm using the channel button to switch to, so you can see that here, uh, with the little yellow marker, I'm controlling track two, track three. Now the fader bank buttons became quite useless with this being a single channel model because um, that's to bank to the next bank of X channels. So if you're on an eight channel mixer, you've got one to eight, press the fader bank button, you go from nine to, and so on. Um, because it's a single channel model, a bank of channels is one channel, which makes it the same functionality as the channel backwards and forwards. <clears throat> so what I did do is I've mapped the fader bank buttons to the functionality of the rotary. Uh, now in default mode, um, by standard, the Rotary is on pan, so if I bring reason down to the mixer level, you can see we've got the fader control. Now the rotary controls pan left, pan right on channel one here. Now, that's great. If I press the fader bank button, that you won't be able to see the screen because my camera above is pretty naff. That takes me then to gain. So if I, again, come up to reason, and I'll bring that down a little, just so you can see. we got the gain. So I can change the gain level. Now if I press the fader bank button again, that takes us to effect send one. So I'll bring reason back up, and come down to the effects. Now you can see effect send level up and down you can see the green select button is illuminated. If I press that, I can enable and disable the actual functionality. So whilst the fader bank forwards and backwards buttons control the function, 
if it's a function that requires enablement, then this select unselect button will do that. Obviously, gain doesn't require enablement, so it doesn't do anything. Uh, FX1, FX2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then we go to um, low pass filter. I can see again, it requires enablement. So we'll bring the region up to the low pass filter, enable low pass, change the level, disable. Fade bank button again, takes us to high pass, enable, disable, and then back to pan. So we can go forwards to pan, we can go forwards through the functions or we can go backwards through the functions. So that's lovely. Um, that's going to take away a lot of me fiddling in reason. I didn't map uh, the compress uh, com compression functionality or the EQ functionality just because there's far too many knobs to um, be passing through and I, tend, I personally tend to use the the rack versions of those anyway I do a lot of vocal recording and I have quite a large vocal chain so the reason built in one um, within the rack I don't use a huge amount so that's a lot of the functionality f for me personally there is great now as well as the as I say the select button is used for uh, track functionality whichever I'm on there mute works as standard it mutes the track so bring reason down again solo solo is the track now I've mapped um, the F5 and F6 to unmute all and unsolo all. So if we solo, we can unsolo. If we solo a couple of tracks, we can then unsolo them all and unmute them all. Um, additionally, we've got um, solo here is pre and click is click. Cycle is loop. Uh, nudge is uh, for the sequencer to come to the right hand side of the loop markers and then marker is to go to the left hand side so we can shoot between we can loop drop and replace I took those as um, for the sequencer um, itself to mean um, drop I want an, uh, a new audio I want to drop in a new one but not necessarily as a as an um, it's an alternative, like an alternative take. And replace is a dub. So it will mute the above track. So drop a new one in or replace. Mute the or mute the old one and drop a new one in. Um, so that's all of those buttons. Obviously, forwards, backwards, stop, start, record. They all work as standard. Um, I haven't mapped F2, F3, F4 because I thought if I share this mapping, somebody else could utilize it. And yeah, um, I'm quite happy. With that, the record button, I don't know if I mentioned, that's invert. So on the on the gain channel, um, that'll invert the signal flow. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm quite happy with it. The BPM and time obviously is how many seconds versus uh, how many bars beats and so on. So really quite happy with what I've got so far. I'm gonna continue playing. Uh, continue learning but if this may be useful to anybody you know please reach out I'm happy to share uh, yeah thank you very much